Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Thank you, Martin. Actually, before I begin my sermon, I have a, a sort of kind of testimony myself I just want to share with you. Some of you will know that last year I was desperately ill as a result of an operation that went wrong and I spent some ten weeks in the Lincoln and Dunstall Hospital. And a number of people came to me and visiting and saying, aren't you angry, aren't you cross, aren't you scared? And I was truthfully able to say, no, I'm not. Now, I'm not normally a touchy-feely person, that's not my <laughs> nature. But boy, was I aware of being supported by prayer. It was just an absolutely extraordinary experience. I've never felt anything like it before, or really, or since. But it was definitely the case. Now, I wouldn't recommend anyone to go through that process to find that out. But please, when you were talking about praying for people earlier, uh, do you know, the power of prayer is absolutely fantastic. And thank you. I know many people throughout the diocese were praying for me, and I guess that could have happened here. And thank you very much indeed for that, because it worked, and I'm very grateful for that. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. From the Gospel. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. In a recent debate on the present religious situation in England, a group of young people came to the conclusion that God is a hesitant hit, but that this church is a decided miss. I suspect that that is a view with which many in our country would agree. There is still a widespread readiness to believe in God. There is a genuine respect for the person of Jesus. But when it comes to the institutional church, there is doubt as to whether it really is a valid bearer of the Christian gospel. It has to be said that England in general is no longer a Christian nation in any meaningful sense. And that tells me that the old forms of mission which served well in their day are now outdated. And we must, must discover new patterns which God wants us to use today. The church is seen as a decreasing minority and increasingly irrelevant. Now, what a depressing way to start a sermon and what still is the beginning of a new year, you may be thinking. But I would want to argue that rather than being depressed, we ought eagerly to be responding to the challenge. How can mission be carried forward? What are the forms of mission most suitable for today? Today's Gospel reading, the baptism of Jesus, focuses on that point when the Spirit of God descended upon Jesus and rested on him. And the first thing we must recognize in, in mission is that we do not do it alone. The Holy Spirit of God is with us, indeed has gone before us, preparing the way for us. And it is possible to see movements of the Spirit blazing the trail. <coughs> Over the past 30 years or so, there's been a tremendous growth in groups meeting both within individual churches and uh, communities, to study the Bible, to pray, to learn more about the faith. This is certainly something I've been noticing going to different parishes and deaneries around Bedfordshire. 
And this is good news, and I believe it is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has also been active in bringing into being new types of Christian communities. The Abbey, Scargill, or in our own diocese, Soul Survivor, to name but three in our church. Focolari, Teze, the Egidio community in the Catholic Church. Communities that are alive and witnessing and growing. But in reality, this idea of meeting in small groups is not new to the church. For several centuries before there were church buildings, the church was rooted in people's homes. And thus there is the very serious question that we need to ask ourselves from time to time. And that question is whether our church buildings are a help or a hindrance to the spread of the Christian gospel. It's certainly a question archdeacons should ask themselves, I believe. But there is good news in this. Again, in this post, I have been astonished at the number of parishes in our archdeaconry that have, are, or are preparing to adapt their churches to meet the needs, meet the needs of this new century. And here at Christchurch, we are, of course, in one of the most modern of our churches. Surely this is evidence of the Spirit speaking to whole institutions as well as groups and individuals. The Holy Spirit is, I am certain, leading changes that are happening to the way the church is run and in the way that ministry is exercised. For centuries, the church was, and to a large extent still is, dominated by the clergy. And this idea dies hard. There are still many lay people who are not only merely content to leave all the work to the clergy, but sincerely believe that as they are paid for it, it's their job. Similarly, I fear to say that there are still clergy who believe that the laity should be passive and obedient. Happily, those views are at last crumbling. And again, here at Christchurch, you are a prime example of the new way forward. Through the leading of the Holy Spirit, there has been over the last three or four decades quite simply an explosion in the number of lay people actively involved in, run, in the running of churches, in participating in worship, engaging in ministry, both formal and informal. And this again is good news, for it's a sign of growth. Now, there are always dangers in the voluntary principle because groups, especially, can become independent of mainstream church life. They can become divisive. They can become elitist, escapist, holy huddles sheltering from the pressures of the world. But they can also be bridge builders. They can penetrate the life of society. They can give room for lay initiative. And I believe the benefits far outweigh the risks. The Holy Spirit that descended upon Jesus cannot be bound and structured. Yes, there is the warning that the church continues to become just one vast machine. Our society is a highly mobile and changing society. And as part of our mission, we need some structures that are informal and temporary, as well as those that appear to go on forever. So what does all this mean for you? Well, firstly, you have a wonderful building. It's a vital and stable place where people can come to worship God. But it is also flexible, as we witnessed this morning, in its ability to be used. Long may it always be here. But balanced with that comes a reassessment of ministry. Well, with the changing patterns of ministry, it is vital that the people of God work as a team to deliver the ministry that is needed in each and every parish. And may I commend you all here at Christ Church for all that you do in that way. As our society becomes more secular, more violent, more materialistic, more greedy, then evangelism, the sharing of the good news, becomes even harder. But if all, and I mean all the people of God, take seriously the vocation that God has given them, then surely we will see growth and new life. 
Now this morning I am here to institute and induct Martin as vicar instead of being priest in charge of this parish. In one sense, this is a strange bit of Church of England legalism, unique to the Church of England. But in another, it is a recognition of the value of this parish as a real source of mission. In the reality of living God's love, with its emphasis of going deeper into God, transforming communities, making new disciples. The dis diocese as large has seen this happening here and we want to affirm it. This is not a new start, but it is a chance to recommit the, to the ministry you are all exercising here. But as I said at the beginning, you do not do this alone. Rather, as today's gospel reminds us, we are strengthened and led by the Holy Spirit. For that Spirit of God, which descended upon and remained with our Lord Jesus Christ, similarly dwells in each and every one of you. I do and hope and pray that you will continue to enjoy developing the ministry that is happening in this parish, so that the Lord God may be able to say of each and every one of you, this is my son or daughter with whom I am well pleased. <laughs>